All right, hope everybody had a great weekend uh, as well. We did uh, the full week for us of uh, work last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday practice, and then players uh, were out of here Thursday and Friday. Coaches got out recruiting on uh, Thursday and Friday of last week, and it was good. And then everybody had the day off yesterday. And back in today, had a great practice here this evening and and, uh, eager to get back uh, into game week and back home as well. So, by week definitely came at a good time for us from a health standpoint. Uh, injury update wise, I would say that uh, there's a chance that everybody that has been out uh, could play on Saturday against A&M. Uh, you know, I would say everybody is probable except for uh, Christian Beal Smith and Corey Rucker. And I'd say as we sit here on Sunday, they're questionable, but definitely. Definitely they have a chance to play. And then uh, even Terrell Dawkins, I'd say he's doubtful for this week, but he continues to come along and and, uh, get closer and closer to hopefully being ready to uh, get back out on the field as well. So we'll see how the rest of the week goes. Obviously got a long time until Saturday, but got a chance to be as healthy as we've been uh, since the beginning of the season on Saturday night, which we'll need everybody and and, uh, should be a great environment. We need a great week of practice to get ready for a good A&M team. So any questions you guys have, I'll be glad to glad to answer them. Hey, Shane, it's Dave. Uh, obviously, you guys got an extra week to kind of think about this one. Um, you know, big game, home game, night game. Just did you worry about handling the hype over an extra week, or is that just kind of, you know, a, a routine at this point? Uh, no, I wouldn't say it's routine because we haven't always – handled it um uh, well but i mean i think coming off the off week last year going into the florida game there was uh, a lot of excitement and a lot of hype and I feel like we handled that well uh after the auburn win going into the clemson game last year we certainly didn't handle that well at all uh but you know this is a mature bunch i think we showed that dave uh after the um uh, the way we handled, you know, adversity early this season, the way that they've continued to get better. I think they've shown that with the way they handled the short week against South Carolina State. I think they showed their maturity with the way they played up in Lexington. And uh, I think, honestly, it's, it's good that we had the off week because we were able to, I don't want to say celebrate the Kentucky win a little bit longer, but certainly could um, uh had some time to come back down to earth a little bit and and then correct and kind of reset where we are as we go forward into the uh into the second half of the season but this is a mature bunch and, and confident that they'll uh be ex- I know they'll be excited to play on Saturday night and confident that they'll prepare the wa- the right way so they can go play well on Saturday night also Shane, it's Colin I guess I don't know how much film you got to watch of A&M last week, but in the preliminary stuff you've been able to see, just what what stands out about the Aggies on on tape? Uh, To me, they're a young team that continues to get better. I know they've had some injuries at the quarterback position, but, uh, you know, I go back to last year just watching them in pregame warm-ups. I mean, they defensively, really across the board as a football team, they look like what you want a football team to look like. They've got size and and length in the secondary. Um, you know, they're 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 young in a lot of spots. They're playing a lot of true freshmen and they continue to continue to get better each and every week. And uh uh, you know, they've had a week to get rested and healthy and, and better themselves as a football team. So I'm sure we'll see the, the best version of A and M coming in here on Saturday night. Hey coach, Andrew Lyon of Gamecocks Digest. Uh I wanted to ask you about the quarterback position because there's been some talks around the possibility that Connor Wakeman could play for the Aggies because Max Johnson's out and with how Haynes King's performed this year. So are you and the staff preparing for the possibility of either quarterback playing? And if so, what goes into the game planning facet of the week for both those guys at the quarterback position heading into a game? Yeah, I mean, I think you're always preparing for uh, multiple quarterbacks. I mean, you're always aware of who – um who's on the roster as well um you know obviously coach fisher has a lot of uh uh confidence in in uh in king and having made him the starter last year and the starter at the beginning of this season and he's played some good football for them uh connor i'm familiar with we really really liked connor at oklahoma when i was there with lincoln and uh, somebody that we really were excited about so you always prepare for multiple quarterbacks and and uh 
you know, we're always going to run our system. We don't, you know, change because of who's in there unless it's uh, two radically different uh, styles of play, uh, which Coach Fisher is going to run his offense and, and do what they do. So, you know, I would say it's no different than than uh, than any other week uh, for us from that standpoint. Shane, it's Ben. Just curious if uh, if you had any update on Greg Adkins and kind of how he's feeling doing, and if there's any kind of anything new on that front. Yeah, he's doing well. He's been in here working each day and and doing well. Hey, Shane, it's uh, Ben Brenner. I know A um, and M runs kind of a, a lot of that dime stuff. Is that is that similar to the way that Arkansas ran it? And if so, does that give you guys a little bit of an edge having kind of seen that style? You uh, you talking like dime personnel defensively? Yeah, the, the the way they go with the the th- that, those three linemen, two linebacker looks. Yeah, I'd say. I mean, a lot of teams been are, are are doing that. I mean, I think defenses nowadays are so multiple. You're going to get multiple personnel packages from from uh, most defenses. I mean, whoever if they're a if they're a four down defense with two linebackers and a nickel and four DBs. Uh, very rarely does do those teams stay in that the entire game. I mean, you've got we don't, and you've got to always prepare for for uh, uh, multiple packages. But you know, the thing with A and M is <laughs> their their defensive backs are built and look like linebackers. So uh, whoever's on the field, you're always prepared for multiple personnel groupings. But certainly, A and M's got the the size and the physicality to to really be. Uh, interchangeable with a lot of the things that that they do, and and every defense I think is always trying to get their best eleven players on the field or their best pass rushers on the field on third down or whatever it may be. So they are a challenge. A and M is because they are very multiple, and um, you don't really know what exactly they're going to be in even on first and second down. I mean they're they're multiple in regards to three down, four down, and the personnel packages they're going to be in. So they they certainly. Uh, defensively, they give our offense a lot to prepare for. Hey, Shane, it's John. Uh, two things, a quick follow-up on, on, on Greg. Do you think he'll be able to be back in the booth this Saturday? Uh, we'll see. Like I said, he's been in the office working and taking it day by day. All right, and uh, I, I know you guys do this stuff every week, but does the bye week present a little bit more of a, a time to do some self-scouting? And, and if so, is there any? Uh, major takeaways that, that you guys had as a staff on, on what y'all were doing really well or, or what y'all need to improve on going into the second half of the season? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yes, the the bye week is, is always when you want to do that, and it's ideal. Now, you, we, we do it every week, you're right, John, um, but you're really, really able to, to dive into it uh, during the off week as well, and uh, especially when that off week comes at the, the halfway point of the uh of the regular season and um you know there's it's really beneficial one see what we're doing well see what we're not doing well uh see what we're doing well with certain personnel maybe not as efficient with other personnel and then uh what do teams have on us as well tendencies that we have that we need to that we need to break whether it be on offense defense or even on special teams tendencies that we have uh so there's a lot of uh a lot of things that came out of that self scout for sure and and then in regards to specifics, you know, I don't want to get it too much into that. I mean, you guys have watched us and seen the things that we do well and maybe the things that we're not doing as well right now. But uh, last week gave us the time to really uh, really dive in and, and work hard on, on getting better at things that we need to get better at and and, uh, and and kind of see where we are as an offense, defense, and special teams unit going forward. Shane, it's Ben again. I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think. You guys are like five and zero or six and zero in games when you've had a little bit of extra time to prepare. Is there a reason for that? Is that just a coincidence? I mean, what is it that you feel like you guys have been able to do as a coaching staff for the last two years with with some of that extra time and been able to put together some game plans that, that have worked for you? Is there is it just yeah. a product of having a little extra time, or I guess what do you think? That yeah, means? I hope you just found some wood to knock on, like I just did, Ben, when you said that, um, and you didn't just. You hope you didn't just jinx us, man. Um, I did not realize that, but yeah, I guess so. Season, season opening games, and then the bowl game, and then the off week last year, and and then uh, I guess a little bit of extra time to get ready for Kentucky. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. To be honest with you, I think anytime you have a little bit of extra time to uh, to prepare, it certainly um, helps. And I won't lie. I mean, after the uh, 
after the uh, bowl game, really, uh, last year, we talked about, hey, we just played really, really well offensively. Let's not, as an offensive staff, defensive staff, and special team staff, let's really not just say, well, we had a few extra weeks to prepare. Like, what was it that allowed us to play so well in the bowl game that we did in the preparation going into the game uh, as well? And let's make sure we continue to do that. Uh, so I think one certainly helps to have a little bit of extra time to prepare for people, but that can always that can be a uh, not always be a positive either. I mean, sometimes you can over prepare if that makes sense too. So uh, I don't know. I think each case is is different. The opponent that we were playing certainly playing Eastern Illinois and and uh, Georgia State aren't necessarily you know SEC teams that we're playing week in week out and and uh, um, we played really well at Kentucky and we played really well in that bowl game and. And uh, we played really well against Florida last year. So I think there's a combination of factors, motivation, and just how you execute and, and how you coach. But we're going to need to keep that going this week. Thanks. There's a little nut wood next to me for what it's worth. Say it again. I said there's a little wood next to me for what it's worth. <laughs> thank thank God, man. Please. Shane, it's Shane uh, Dick again. Um, you know, that, that backup running back spot behind Marshawn and CBS can't go. Um, do you kind of like Juju in that role to maybe take 10, 12 carries? Do you like one of the other guys, Amos or Miller? Do you have a set number two guy behind Marshawn with CBS up? Uh, it's Juju. Uh, that's the way we've done it all year. And, you know, all year Juju and Marshawn and CBS have been our top three. And when CBS has been out, it's been Juju. And Juju's done a really nice job. So uh, those young running backs need to continue to show it. Honestly, they got to show it in practice that, that we can count on them on Saturdays. And, if you show it in practice, that, and I've told them this as well, you show it in practice uh, that you're a guy that we can count on to put in the game and 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 uh, uh, make plays and 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 protect the passer and hold onto the football and catch the football and do all the things that you have to do as a running back. <laughs> we'll continue to find ways to get you on the field. Uh, but right now, uh, Juju and Marshawn and CBS are doing the best uh, best job of that right now for us. And it's Colin, I guess. You mentioned the self-scout stuff. As you get into the back half of your schedule, just what are some things you'd like to see either improve or, or stay kind of where they're at in terms of, of what you do well? Um, you know, kind of like I said a minute ago, I think it was John that asked the question. I mean, I'm not going to get too much into the specifics. You guys see what we're doing well. We're running the ball better the last three weeks. Uh, we need to continue to run the ball well. We're turning the ball over too many times. We need to stop turning the ball over so many times. We're doing a good job of, of – uh, creating turnovers and getting some interceptions the last couple weeks or last few games. We need to keep that going. We're playing really well in some units on special teams. We need to get the other units going. So, I mean, there's a, there's a million things that we could talk about, but there's some good things that we're doing right now that we need to continue to do. And there's some things that we're not doing well that, that uh, we need to do better. And all you guys uh, can look at those SEC stats that come out every single week and watch us play and, and, and can come to the conclusion as far as what those things are. <coughs> Hey, Shane, it's Alan. Uh, we heard from a few different players and from yourself after the Kentucky game that that was your best week of practice all season. How do you go about duplicating that as a coach, or is it even possible to kind of duplicate a best week, you know, multiple times throughout the year or two two games in a row? Yeah, I think you, uh, you need to. I mean, we talked to the team about today in our team meeting that we can't just, you know, assume that everything's okay because we had a good week against Kentucky and think that, you know, it's going to be that way going forward. Like, we – really really grinded and prepared to be to play like we did against Kentucky and that work is done during the week and and we've got to do it again uh this week as well and uh the the physicality and the intensity and the effort that we practiced with was really good the week of the Kentucky game and and we'll need to do it again this week uh um for sure and it's a long season i mean every practice isn't going to be perfect but you know the key for us is to continue to uh just get better as the season goes and and uh, be a better football team than what we are um, right now. We need to get better, and the way you do that is to you just don't go out on Saturdays and, and just say that you're going to get better in those 60 minutes. Like, you have to get better with the way that you practice uh, during the week. <clears throat> Shane, wanted to ask, uh, is there any extra value in the bye week for the freshmen who are playing just – having that little break to maybe catch their breaths as they're going sort of through this grind and race for the first time? Yeah, um, I think any of the freshmen, whether uh, whether they're playing or not playing, but, <clears throat> excuse me, especially the ones that um, 
that are playing, and, and you might have, you, uh, if I didn't know any better, I would have thought you would be in our had been in our team meeting today because that's one thing we talked about. I mean, a lot of these freshmen that we have on our team right now were seniors, not all of them, but I mean, not a lot of them, all of them were seniors in high school last year, and a lot of them were getting ready to start the playoffs this time last year, and their regular season was starting to wind down, and, and instead. Uh, we're just at the halfway point of the regular season. And I'd say it's very much like a rookie in the NFL. They go from playing 12 college games to 17 regular season games and three preseason games in the NFL. So it's a it's a long season. And um, uh, that bye week, I think, came at a good time for, for everyone, the health of our team, just the, uh, mentally getting refreshed a little bit, physically uh, getting refreshed after six really hard games, physical games. And uh, and then for those freshmen, definitely to be able to uh, get home for a few days if they went home or just get away from football for a few days and, and uh, come back uh, rejuvenated and, and ready to ready to roll. Because we, we, we got a lot of work in with them last week, too, those young guys, freshmen, just um, uh, some extra work in practice, trying to bring them along and continue to get them better. Shane, I think you mentioned uh, that you guys had recruited Connor Wegman at, I guess, Oklahoma at that point. But I guess, what do you kind of remember about him as a, as a quarterback if and if he does go ahead and play? Who man, that was a uh, it wasn't that long ago, but it seems like a long time ago. But I just remember, you know, Lincoln Riley. Lincoln really didn't offer a ton of quarterbacks. I mean, there was one or two quarterbacks a year, maybe that. Uh, he offered a scholarship to and and was really really high on maybe two definitely one but uh certainly remember that uh uh Connor was was one that Lincoln really 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 liked and uh, that says everything to me 